Hello everybody, Hamp Thomas again, and today I want to talk to you about a subject that tends to get me in a little bit of trouble. It's about appraisal adjustments and proving adjustments. Why is that a big deal? Well, we've got all these classes now about how to do graphs and, you know, some of these classes are great. And in big cities, you know, where you've got hundreds or thousands of quality comparables, these things can be effective. The problem is that America is not made up like that. You know, sure, we got a lot of big cities, but the majority of America, you know, is small to medium-sized towns and communities, and we don't have, you know, perfect comparables. The real estate industry is not a, a data perfect product, if you will. You know, we're not selling widgets or computers or groceries or, you know, anything that is easily to track like that on a computer. What happens in a real estate transaction? People are involved. Well, anytime that the human being is involved, we have things like emotion. We have circumstances. There are things that impact the final value that don't show up in the MLS or they can't be tracked by a computer. You know, it's just not possible. That's why we always talk about appraisers having local knowledge and there will never be a substitute for an appraiser having local knowledge. And you only get that with time, folks. You know, it takes time to build your contacts among the real estate community and know which agents to call to find out, you know, why did this house sell so much above the others or why did this one sell so low, you know, about the sickness in the family or whatever it is. It's local skill and knowledge and it just takes time to develop that. So what do we do about that? You know, why do we have so many of these things first off is because the GSEs and big banking, and I'm sorry to say this, but this is my personal opinion now, guys, they have pushed for us to have appraisal reports that they can take our data and put it into a computer system. And what's the main reason? I can't say this in a nice way, so I'm just gonna say it. They wanna take our job. They want to, they don't wanna eliminate appraisers, but they want to cut them way back down, you know, in the percentage wise where appraisers might do 85 or 90% of the work. They'd like to see us down about 40 or 35% of the work and like to have an, a logarithm, a computer system, whatever, to be able to do an appraisal. As long as people are involved in the appraisal process, there's always going to be things a computer doesn't know, you know, and what does a computer look at? Most of the time they're looking at proximity, not comparability. I know I've said that before, but it really is. If you think about that proximity, not comparability. Let me just give you one example. I, I did a house recently, did an appraisal, and I think it was about 350,000 was the sale. But when I did my appraisal, I think I ended up using five comparable sales and I had, you know, pretty good comparables, one a little smaller, a couple a little bigger and two pretty close on size, you know, close on the size, the age, quality, condition, everything was pretty good matches. Well, I decided to go to this, I have to say the name of it, I guess. It was RPR, which is the Realtors Property Resource. And don't get me wrong, folks, this is a great tool for the real estate industry. It makes beautiful graphs. It makes a presentation that looks really strong in front of your sellers. So it's a great marketing tool to use. However, for coming up with a value, it is not the right instrument. In this case, we ended up having over 50 so-called comparable sales. And just to give you a list of what they had on there, there were sales in size that range, I think it was like 1,019 up to 43, almost 4,400 square feet. There were dates of the houses built from 1919 up to new construction. 
you know, there were so many different things between the lot sizes. I mean, everything, even the prices from 108,000 up to 1.4 million over that. Those are not comparable sales. And what do they do? They really take all these, let's just say it's 50 sales. They take those 50 sales, come up with an average, the magic price per square foot, which we already know is pretty dangerous. But then they take that, they apply it to the subject. And what number do they use? They use the square footage total from public records. Now, you know how I feel about that. Those numbers are estimates from exterior views only. Those numbers are not right. So you take a price per square foot from 50 sales, apply that to a square footage total that's likely wrong to start with, and what are you gonna get? You're gonna get a wrong value, guys. In this case, it was about $89,000 difference in the values and RPR came up higher than the appraisal did. Now, $89,000, that's real money to somebody, and then they're gonna say, oh, well, is the appraiser biased or the appraiser doesn't know what he's doing? What's the difference? The, the difference is easy to explain, but people always have in the back of their mind, the appraiser did something wrong, and they are starting to trust those automated valuations. And that's kind of been the goal of the GSEs and the big banks all along. They want consumers, you know, to have a, a warm, fuzzy feeling about these automated valuations so that people will begin to trust them more and move appraisers back down on the scale of trust. And that's something we just can't do. Now, you know, I'm old school. These graphs and things, they look great in a report. And, you know, I have no problem with us using those. But there are things, like in my market, we have a, a lot of one-of-a-kind properties, you know. And it's hard to find three quality comparables a lot of times. So there's no way for us, you know, to make it look pretty on an appraisal report. We have exceeding adjustments, they used to call them. So, but the point is that you have to have, you know, there's just, it's not a perfect appraisal, let's put it that way. The graphs and all that, no matter what you do, how far you go back in time, or, you know, how you widen the search, that graph is truly not going to give you a number that's a really good adjustment amount. So what do you do? You have your local skill and knowledge. You know about the cost approach. You know, you have to understand what things cost and their impact on the market. And you learn that over time. You know, what's the difference in a screen porch? What about a screen porch, you know, that's got fireplaces at both ends and, you know, has really fancy things. Every, you know, screen porch, is not worth the same amount. Every deck is not, you know. There are a lot of, it depends. It depends on the view across the street. There's so many things other than just quality and condition. You know, in my market, there can be as many as 50 things, you know, that really impact the value. So what do we do? We explain why comp number two is different from comp number one. You know, it had a kitchen remodel and one bathroom remodel last year. On the view, it has a view of a paddock and a beautiful horse farm out the back pasture, and none of the neighbors have that. There's a difference in value. Whatever the differences are, we explain that in the appraisal report. And it's almost always used comparing to, to a doctor, asking a doctor what they did in surgery and they're explaining it to somebody that doesn't understand what they're talking about. And too many times appraisers are explaining their reports to people that really don't understand the comparable process. You know, they just, it's going over their head and there's nothing wrong with them not knowing it. They're not supposed to know it. But these graphs and things, you know, we need to train appraisers properly, let them do their jobs, and we don't have to be able to prove 
everything in our reports. That's something that's made up from the GSEs and big banks and everything is not provable with a graph. You hire an appraiser to do a job and trust them to use their professional opinion on that. That's why the, it takes so long to get an appraisal license. It's not an easy task, but we have to do things with common sense and we need to get back to a little common sense in appraising.